Hey everyone, this is my 2010 Dodge Ram 1500. Today I'm going to attempt to replace the springs and shocks. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're here for a how-to video, then this may be the wrong video for you. This is more of a how the hell video. So let's start with the symptoms and why I'm undertaking this job. I noticed over the last wee while, and by wee while I mean two years, that when I was going over bumps, it was starting to chatter a bit. But the biggest giveaway was when I was braking, going over bumps, I was actually losing steering. What's basically happening was the shock absorbers were having no effect and it was relying completely on the springs, which means that the wheels were coming off the ground for too long and you were losing traction. This is pretty dangerous. Also over longer bumps, you can feel the front of the truck doing that quite a lot instead of ironing out the bumps. So that's why we're doing this today. Now I don't have the parts yet, I'm waiting for the delivery truck, but we can at least start stripping the front end down. So I'll just show you what's involved with that, okay? First thing we need to do is jack up the truck, remove the front wheels. So when you're jacking it up, I'm going to use the, the front cross member. Do not jack it up in these sections here because you're going to need the wheels to hang down to get these springs and shocks off. So I'm going to jack it up right in the middle, put axle stands, one there, one over there. So I've jacked up the truck enough to get the weight off the, or the majority of the weight off the wheel but I've still left the wheel touching the ground reason being I want to break the lug nuts loose it's easier to do when it's in the ground now if you've got an impact wrench an impact gun then yeah, you probably don't need to do that but sometimes these things are really tight so I'm going to use a breaker bar and a big socket as I say just to loosen them off the reason I'm doing this I don't want to bend the, the studs coming out of the hub might be paranoid but for the time it takes, it's worth doing. And that's all I'm talking about doing, just loosen them that much. All the way around, same on the other side, then we can jack it fully off. <clears throat> then we can jack it fully up and um, get the wheels off. Rather break a wheel than break my head. Other side. Okay, what's next? Now we can get a closer look at what we're trying to achieve today. This is the coil and shock assembly here. Attaches there. And then you've got your three, your three nuts up the top. So you don't have to get into the engine bay to do this. You can do it all from here. It's a wee bit awkward, but it's just plastic. You can push that out of the way. However, in order to get that out, need to disconnect this because everything's been compressed that way so you want to disconnect that want to disconnect your tie rod want to disconnect this uh, anti-sway bar link we also want to just remove this this ABS sensor wire just so we don't stretch that I'll just unclip that and move it to the side and also we need to take your brake caliper and uh, housing off two bolts at the back of that, those ones there. One there, one at the bottom, pull that out. Make sure you tie that up somewhere. You don't want to be stretching your brake cable. So let me go and assemble some tools. But first, let's put some penetrant on all the threads. Give it a fighting chance. 
and while we're finding our tools, uh, this could do its magic. I'm going to start with the tie rod end. If I take the top one out first, off the top of the, the this thing, I've forgotten what it's called, then that will drop down a bit and then everything will become a bit floppy. So I want to keep that tight to get it off and also the sway bar for now. Once I've got them off, then we'll get the big guy off. So this has got a little crown nut or castle nut <laughs> with a split pin. Now this has been on 11 years. Chances are it's not going to come off without a fight, but you never know. As long as it doesn't break on the inside, we'll be good. Nearly there. Oh, success. Look at that. Look at that. All right, I am going to try and use my impact gun on this. If you don't have one, for the record, it is a, not that, um, it is a 21 millimeter. Okay, I'll do a full list of all the tools I use at the end of the video, okay? Yeah, that's the easy bit. Now we have to <laughs> separate these two. Now apparently, all you need is a BFH. So rather than hitting up that and damaging your, your threads there and mushrooming it, you actually whack that, apparently. Give that a shot and then that should pop free. You're gonna get in the way. Hold on, let me move you. Okay, here we go. Wow, actually worked. Cool, so that's the list. I think next I'm going to actually take off the brake caliper. So remember, disconnect this. It's just a little clip there. I think I just uh, leave it out with a wee screwdriver. Yeah, like that. That's a bit looser, but I'm going to move this whole caliper over to here, tie it up with something. I suppose I better get a tie. Now at the back we have, there we, there, 21 millimetre there, uh, where are we, there, Oops, sorry, 21 there. So two 21 millimetre bolts need to come out. Now if you find that your uh, brake disc is actually, or your rotor is really tight, you might want to lever the pistons back into the housing of the caliper. But mine is, mine is rotating. Don't worry, it's just surface rust that's broken off. <laughs> yeah, they're due for replacement soon as well, but we'll get to that in another day. So, 221s at the back. So you can see straight away that the cables are getting too tight. So you want to get that over there and get it tied up. That will do that. Okay, next. So the disc is now free to come off. Don't really think it would get in the way, but it's just going to flop about anyway. So we'll remove that. Look at this, tie rod just wants to pop off already, so put that out of the way. So all that's holding this on at the top is that bolt there, but it's still going to need to come down a bit for us to get this off, so that's why we need to take the sway bar link, the link, sway bar link, drop link, take that off. And this is an 18 millimeter. Mm -hmm. 
So as you can see, the whole assembly was spinning. Now there is a hex at the end of this, so I'm gonna to have to just use a, a wrench at the top and a smaller wrench. Looks like a, oh my goodness, what is that? An eight or nine millimeter? We'll give it a shot. Okay, I've run out of tools. I cannot get that drop link off. I might end up cutting it off. But let's proceed to the next step and see if we can even just lever everything down to get the strut out. Failing that, I'll need to chop that and then go and buy a new one. I'll probably buy two because the other side's gonna be the same, right? Okay, so what's next? Next, I'm gonna remove this big guy. So hopefully that'll come off with the impact gun and then BFH to the side of that. That should pop up, that should fall down. Now, I don't have direct access to get the gun up there, so I'm going to try and use the universal swivelly joint thing. This is probably where, I, oh goodness, it's already starting to fall apart. Yeah, I don't imagine this is going to work. Probably end up using a bag or spanner. Destroyed. Right, big spanner type. Actually no, I can just I can just use a big uh, breaker bar. That's what I'll do. Oh, it's not even tight. I mean it was tight, but it wasn't crazy tight. So this one is also spinning the entire uh, join, joint, whatever. However, this has got a much bigger uh, end that I can hopefully, hopefully get off this time. That looks to be about a 12, maybe a 10. Let's try and get the right size this time. Okay, so this one is in fact a 10 mil this is our 21. Okay, so I just need to take this big bolt off here, the three bolts at the top, which I think are um, maybe 14, I'll check that. And hopefully I don't need to remove this strop link, I can just lever it down, but as I say, I'll just be chopping it and buying a new one, if it's gonna be a problem. Okay, big bolt here, and the bolts at the top, or nuts at the top. So this one here is a 24 millimeter. I don't expect it's gonna be a problem to get off. It's very meaty and it looks pretty clean. Penetrant and a bit of wiggling. Meanwhile, I'll get into the top ones. Turns out they are 15 mil. And they're tighter than they look. Ah, 
know, very tight. Let's see if this bottom one's going to move at all. A bit of gentle persuasion. Don't want to hit it any harder than that. I'm going to try and unscrew it from the other side. It does have a head down there. I just don't think I've got full access at the back. I'll have a look. Well, it turns out I do have access. Look at that. Of course, it's a different size from the nut. This is a 21, and the nut was a 24, because why not? seized. Right, I need to go and research this for a minute, make sure I'm not doing anything really stupid. I have now succeeded in destroying this bushing. Basically the bolt is completely seized on the inside of that bushing. It's not coming out. So it turns out I'm not the first to experience this little problem. There's people that have been hitting it with bigger hammers and bigger tools and it just doesn't come out. So it looks like I'm going to have to replace that bushing. <sighs> the easiest way to do that is to remove the, the whole lower control arm, which, remain, which means removing the drive shaft and completely messing up my alignment if I can't do it in situ. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll try the other side first and then I'll know what sort of parts I'm going to have to order. Mm. Well, it's exactly the same story on this side. Possibly worse. I noticed that this bolt is mushroomed. That wasn't me. So I think possibly someone has tried to replace this before and given up. I've had the car since 2000 and... No, I've had the car for a while. Oh my goodness. I got the truck when it was about four years old. So, as I say, that wasn't me. So someone has been in here before. Anyway, that's not coming out. That's not coming out. So I'm going to have to just chop that off. I'll probably chop this off to get me access and get this spring out. But I'm not going to chop anything until my new spring arrives at least. Make sure I've got the right part there. As it is, I could reassemble if I really have to. But I don't desperately need the truck right now. So I'll go and price up some parts. I did warn you this was not going to be a how-to, more of a what happens if. Right, I suppose I will tidy up my tools for now. Nothing, nothing else I can do. Well, unless I start chopping, but as I say, I don't want to start chopping until I've got some parts to replace the chopped parts with. So, tune in tomorrow, I guess. I need to tidy this up. Bye.